Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times smug movie characters got wrecked. For this list, we'll be looking at the most arrogant and puffed up fictional film characters who eventually got their comeuppance. Plot points will be discussed, so consider this your official spoiler alert. Which of these did you find the most satisfying? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. James Franco This is the end. One thing that can be said about this movie's cast, they weren't afraid to make themselves look really unlikable. Dad, to have you here. Hey, Johnny, what's up? Hey, it's a James. Never forget it again, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Come on in. This is the End is a scathing satire of the entertainment industry, painting many celebrities as vain, entitled, and utterly selfish people. And none are as smug as the fictionalized James Franco. You play video games? Yes. Well, guess what, buddy? You like art? Uh, yep. You ever been to Subway? Yes. You order a sandwich? Somebody put that together for you, dude. So that's art. In fact, his pompous attitude directly results in his death. Franco is actually raptured after a display of selflessness, but he ruins it by crudely mocking Danny McBride on the way up. He then swiftly falls back to Earth, where he is promptly consumed. Some of the characters ultimately learn their lesson. James Franco certainly does not. I'll what tell I you what happened, Franco. You don't get to get sucked up into heaven. <laughs> you are being petty. Man, Tom Petty. Number 9. Scut Farkas A Christmas Story no one likes a tyrant, and A Christmas Story has a bad one. Listen, jerk, when I tell you to come, you better come. The movie follows young Ralphie Parker throughout the 1940 holiday season. Like many kids, he's excited about that one great present, but he's also forced to deal with the nasty piece of work in Scud Farkas. Even the name is horrible. Scud Farkas. Scud Farkas, what a rotten name. We were trapped. There he stood, between us and the alley, Scut Farkas staring out at us with his yellow eyes. Scut mistreats Ralphie and his friends, often scaring them with his yellow eyes. He had yellow eyes! And putting them in painful positions until they beg uncle. But he finally gets his after throwing a snowball at Ralphie. The frustrated kid had had enough and attacks his enemy with a flurry of punches and insults. While we don't condone violence, it's nice to see our protagonist standing up for himself to teach Farkas a lesson. Something had happened. A fuse blew, and I had gone out of my skull. Number 8. The Riddler – Batman Forever Casting Jim Carrey as the Riddler was a stroke of genius. I hope you made extra. Who the hell are you? Just a friend. But you can call me... The Riddler. He's a very lively character, and Carrie's unique brand of energy is a perfect fit. The Riddler is incredibly self-satisfied throughout Batman Forever. We all know the type, those who think they're smarter than everyone around them and aren't afraid to boast about it. This smugness is practically ingrained in the character, as evidenced by the way he maliciously taunts the hero with elaborate puzzles. Go ahead. You can say it. You're a genius. Go. Go. <laughs> It doesn't help that the Riddler is actually a formidable foe, figuring out Bruce's identity and successfully destroying the Batcave. Still, Batman gets the last laugh, wrecking the brainwave collector that was crucial to the Riddler's plan, while the villain ends up at Arkham Asylum. Edward, please, who is Batman? I'm Batman. <laughs> Number 7. Fred O'Banion, Dazed and Confused We return to the theme of school tormentors with Fred O'Banion, a two-time senior who loves mistreating freshmen. I heard they got you pretty bad. And I asked them to take it easy on you. I can't believe they did that. Man, God, no wonder. Ben Affleck does a great job playing the character and certainly has the imposing presence needed for the parts. Thanks to his convincing portrayal, we understand that, unlike most of the other seniors, O'Banion doesn't see the initiation-style rituals as a source of fun. No, he genuinely hates the younger students, going to horrid extremes and making their lives miserable. Nice try, freshman. Tell you what, 
for being such brave little kids. I'm only going to give Ishii a five licks, okay? Of course, this makes his very messy comeuppance all the sweeter. Sick of Obanyan's arrogance and behavior, Mitch and his pals scheme to cover him in white paint. It works perfectly, and the antagonist can do nothing but throw a hissy fit and storm away in his car. Damn it! Number 6. Clark – Goodwill Hunting Clark plays a minor but iconic part in the story of Goodwill Hunting. A pretentious Harvard student with bad hair, he's the type of scholar who takes great pride in his intelligence. The economic modalities, especially in the southern colonies, could most aptly be characterized as agrarian pre-capital. Right. He's unbelievably arrogant, often showing off his memorized knowledge in a bid to be praised. He wants to be the smartest guy in the room, but his desperation reeks of snooty haughtiness. Because Wood drastically underestimates the impact Wood of social distinctions. Wood drastically underestimates the impact of social distinctions predicated upon wealth, especially inherited wealth. You got that from Vickers. Thankfully, he's eventually put in his place by Will, who shatters his ego and dismantles his education, which is really just plagiarizing textbooks. The protagonist later shows off a bit himself, displaying a woman named Skylar's number to a befuddled Clark. How do you like them apples? <laughs> we don't think he likes them apples. Number 5. Ed Rooney – Ferris Bueller's Day Off Dean of Students Ed Rooney has a good motive in theory. One of his students has been perpetually missing school, and he wants to get to the bottom of it. So far this semester, he has been absent nine times. Nine times? Nine times. But he goes about it in all the wrong ways. He makes it his personal vendetta to track Ferris Bueller down, and that means skipping school for the day himself. We suppose he doesn't see the irony. He's also a very unlikable man, often acting self-righteously and committing crimes. Les jeux sont faits. Translation. The game is up. But ultimately, he pays the price. Rooney gets absolutely battered throughout the film, and by the end, he's left a filthy, disheveled mess without a car or any dignity. And to think Ferris gets away with everything, so all that misery was for nothing. By the way, Mr. Rooney, you left your wallet on the kitchen floor. Number 4. Hans Gruber – Die Hard Hans Gruber is a great villain for numerous reasons, namely because he's a very smart criminal. Because I am interested in the $640 million in negotiable bearer bonds that you have locked in your vault. His plan is quite elaborate. He leads his team with confidence, and he's carefully thought out everything. The problem is that Hans knows he's smart, which makes him a rather boastful man. At one point, he even calls himself an exceptional thief. I am an exceptional thief, Mrs. McLean, and since I'm moving up to kidnapping, you should be more polite. Calling yourself exceptional is the very definition of smugness. But the good news is that the hero, John McLean, foils everything. He kills most of the villain's crew, saves the bearer bonds, and personally dispatches of Hans himself. The exceptional thief dies with a horrified expression on his face, and it's very satisfying to see. Well, I hope that's not a hostage. Number 3. Hans Landa – Inglorious Bastards Few movie villains are as smug as Hans Landa. A Nazi officer, Hans is responsible for taking the lives of countless innocent people in occupied France. You're sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? Yes. Like Hans Gruber, Landon knows he's smart. He enjoys toying with his victims and often plays polite before dropping the veneer and watching them squirm. And wo genau in Paris ist dieser Berg? <laughs> He's all smiles by the end of the film, as he betrays Hitler and ends the war for his own selfish reasons. But in a very gratifying act of intelligence, protagonist Aldo Rain finds a loophole of sorts in the deal that Hans created. And in the process, he crafts a very, shall we say, permanent way of identifying the villain's allegiances. What's up, you bitch? I think this just might be my masterpiece. Number 2. 
Dolores Umbridge, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. It's no small feat to rival Voldemort in terms of sheer evil, but Dolores Umbridge is certainly in the running. Because you know, deep down, you deserve to be punished. Don't you, Mr. Potter? Her sickly sweet fashion sense betrays her true motive, which is to squash any and all mention of Voldemort at Hogwarts. She's essentially the Ministry's propaganda machine, and she rules Hogwarts with an iron fist. What's it mean? Magic is forbidden in the corridor. It means the Ministry is interfering at Hogwarts. Umbridge is also just fiercely unappealing, with her draconian rules, use of unforgivable curses, and that annoying little titter. This makes it all the more rewarding when Harry Potter uses her own words against her. Hermione tricks Umbridge into entering the Forbidden Forest, and Harry unleashes a zinger of a goodbye as she is hauled away by the centaurs. Tell them I mean no harm! I'm sorry, Professor. I must not tell lies. What are you doing? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Jabba the Hutt Star Wars Episode 6 – The Return of the Jedi Karma comes to Jabba the Hutt in the most satisfying manner possible, and it serves as a highlight in the Star Wars canon. We have powerful friends. You're going to regret this. Oh. Jabba is a real nasty piece of work and perhaps one of the greediest antagonists around. Aside from the violence, humiliation, and mistreatment he inflicts on others, Jabba is also very conceited. He sees himself as an all-powerful gangster who couldn't possibly be defeated, and he continuously defies the heroes. <laughs> He underestimates them, but he really shouldn't have. Luke Skywalker and his band of good guys aptly defeat Jabba. In a wonderful bit of symbolism, Princess Leia kills the crime lord with the chains he forced her to don. Karmic defeat has never looked so sweet. <laughs> Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.